Greetings all. Back in the mid 90s when I started my Warhammer journey, I was collecting Dark Angels. So I thought today that I might hark back to that a little bit and make myself a character just to have around. Be a bit nostalgic with maybe. So today I'm going to be making myself a Blade Guard Lieutenant. I had originally planned to use the Indomitus one with a few changes, but I actually quite like the pose of the Warhammer Day exclusive model. And as it's pretty much identical to the regular Blade Guard, I figured I'd use one of those as a base instead. I'm going to begin with the shield. Whilst I could use the one that comes with the Blade Guard and fancy it up a little, I have a plan for it in another kit batch. So instead, I'm going to use one from the Stormcast Eternals, with this Storm Shield from the Dark Angels Company Veterans grafted onto it. To begin with, I'm going to have to remove all of the backing to this Storm Shield. It would normally have a Terminator arm attached to it, but I had taken it off previously for a project that didn't go anywhere. Taking my knife and trimming a little at a time, I carved the back of the shield till it was a nice smooth curve that could be attached to the front of the Stormcast Shield. Once this has been completed, I could then take one of the shields from the Stormcast Vindicator set and do something similar to the Sigmar icon on the front, working slowly with my knife to make a nice smooth surface. And with that done, I could then compare the two shields together. The Storm Shield has a slight edging to it, and I decided that it would be better to fit if I were to trim that down to the inner cross symbol. The majority of this I did with my clippers before coming in with my knife to do the detailed bits and tidy up without losing the rope decorations from the edges. With this done, I could then compare where the Storm Shield would fit. In order for it to sit nicely, I would need to trim down the outer rim on the Vindicator Shield. I first marked where this cut would go, then shaved it down flat with my knife. Once the Storm Shield is attached, it should match up fairly well to the remaining rim and look as though it is meant to be there. And after gluing it into place and squeezing tightly to make sure that the parts fit well, I can move on to the back of the Vindicator Shield. As it is meant to be carried in a hand, the shield is missing its handle, so I'm going to have to make a pretty simple one from a section of an old Stormcast mace I had lying around, snipping it to size before gluing it in place. It does also have the ends of the straps that would have held it on the Vindicator's arm in the middle of the shield, but I figured this could be explained away as a maglock technology, as I was not feeling in the mood for sculpting something to go there. If they can maglock a helmet to their waist, they can surely use similar tech to keep their shield straight. The next step to be taken would be the arm to hold the shield. I have here the chainsaw arm from one of my outriders that turned into something else. It was an okay match for the pose of the blade guard and it already had the chainsaw removed. So with a little more effort and trimming, I could hollow out the hand to sit over the shield. Once the process of hollowing this out had been done, I could then work on replacing the fingers and thumb. Otherwise, this poor guy is going to look rather disfigured. And to do this, I am turning to the Tactical Squad. One of their left hands that hold their bolt guns has fingers and a thumb. In just the right position for my purposes. And very carefully, so as not to lose the tiny thumb, I could trim them off with my knife, ready to be glued onto the blade guard hand in an appropriate position. Now at first, I glued the fingers on at this point but I found that it made life a lot more difficult to add the shield later, so I took them off again to add later on. And onto the body. I'm using one of the blade guard from the Indomitus kit, and therefore it has the left arm already attached to it, which does not suit my needs. So I trimmed it carefully off with my knife to give me the surface to attach my edited outrider arm to, before gluing the two halves of the body together. At this point, I noticed that part of the body armor is attached to the helm on this model, so I snipped that free of the helm and glued it into place, as I will not be using the standard helm. Once the body had time to set, 
I transferred it to a base to get an idea of where the shield would sit and the arm would need to be. I could then bring in the shield and arm and begin the painstaking process of positioning the shield, the arm and then the fingers so that it has the position I want without needing too much green stuff work. Doing this I discovered that the outrider's hand was not in the ideal position and so I had to trim it off and then use my knife I cut a little off of the hand in order to change its angle so that the shield isn't being held too strangely before reattaching it with some glue. I would need some green stuff here to fill the gap I had made, but it would not be too big of a deal. Once I had everything positioned how I wanted it, you might notice a bit of a gap on the bottom here. The Vindicator shield is about a millimetre different in size from the Blade Guard one. So to keep the hand at a similar height, I've decided to leave a space for the all-important tactical rock on his base. And now a head. I wanted a nice hooded head, and the Dark Angels have several to choose from. The company Vets kit has many, including helmeted heads with hoods. But as those helmets aren't really designed for a Primaris, I decided instead to use a head from the Dark Angels Upgrade Sprue that I totally didn't buy just for this kit bash. I am not however going to glue it in place just now, as it will be easier to paint separately. Once the head was chosen, I needed to move on to the right arm. Again, using the Dark Angels Upgrade Sprue, I'm taking this nice sword here. I will need to trim off both it and the blade guard sword from the hands, carefully using my knife so as not to damage either, before marking a centre point in both the Dark Angel sword and the hand with my knife to make life easier when joining. To join this part, as it's quite long and pokey outy, I'm going to drill into both of the parts with a 1mm drill bit before inserting a length of super glued 1mm wire into one side, clipping it till only a little pokes out and then super gluing it into the hole on the other part. This pinning joint makes for a stronger bond and a lot less likely that the parts will snap off randomly when my cat gets to the painting table. A forlorn hope, but I have to try something. And the arm can now be glued into place on the body. And lastly for this blade guard, I will need to add his backpack. I could have just used the standard blade guard backpack, but I felt like adding some more Dark Angel paraphernalia, namely this nice little banner here from the company veterans kit. It would usually have a little adornment on the top, but I used this on something else quite some time ago. For these purposes, however, it does not matter. Using my knife, I took off the iron halo from the blade guard backpack and flattened out the area it had come from and the bottom of the banner pole. With that done, I could make an indent in both sides as with the sword before pinning it in a similar manner onto the top of the backpack, making sure to get it at the right angle so that the banner would fall properly. Once that was done, I could add the iron halo to the top of the pole with some plastic glue and then bring the backpack onto the model, bringing this blade guard kit bash to a close. And here we have my take on a blade guard lieutenant of the Dark Angels chapter, painted up in the bone white of the Deathwing. I made him a lieutenant, but if you wanted a captain, you could probably, instead of using the hooded helm, use the fancy feathered one that comes with the upgrade sprue. Or if you're feeling particularly fancy, you could carefully remove the wings from said helm and attach them to the standard blade guard one. I really enjoyed this one, as it gave me a little nostalgia for when I started collecting Warhammer, although back then my idea of kit bashing was to glue four extra chainsaws onto an assault marine, because more swords equals more attacks, right? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you're not subscribed then a simple button press can fix that. Maybe drop a like too? I love reading the comments, and any suggestions and feedback are welcome. So with that, stay safe and have a good one all.